Hello there. You probably haven't seen as much of me as you're used to, and that's because the US Barista Championship is once more right around the corner. And I know it doesn't feel like a year has passed, but somehow it has. Anyways, what's been eating up most of my time recently has been creating a signature beverage. And a really short version of a signature beverage is that it's basically your showstopper. It's a beverage that highlights a coffee and your theme, and it's really tasty, and it's, it's greater than the sum of its parts. Now, if you remember any of my signature beverages from last year, and I'll link those down below, Below, you'll remember that they pull a lot from the world of cocktails and mixology, and frankly, most signature beverages do. But leading into that a little bit heavier, today I want to show you some other interesting cocktails that you can make with coffee to make them really, really tasty coffee drinks. These are really going to turn into mocktails. We're not going to be really using alcohol today. We're going to be instead using coffee as a base to some really nice flavor combinations. And hopefully this will just spark some curiosity into what other flavors you can pair with coffee or what other cocktails you can turn into really, really nice coffee signature beverages for yourself at home. Now, two of these drinks are going to be using cold brew and one of them is going to be using espresso. So if you don't have an espresso machine, there are two other options that you can make at home uh, just using cold brew you make or store-bought cold brew. Now, our schedule of events today is as follows. We're gonna be starting with a cold brew mojito. We'll be moving on to a take on a whiskey sour. And then we're gonna be doing, to look at my list, a Moscow mule. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about it real fast. Before we jump into the actual recipes, there is one thing I wanna talk about first, and that's gonna be the coffee pairing that you use in these drinks. Similarly to how different types of cocktails use different types of alcohols and spirits, we wanna think about our coffee selection in kind of the same way. We're gonna be making a lot of drinks today that are pretty fruity, they are tropical, they are kind of citrusy, and so we wanna think about our coffee pairing. We don't wanna just use any coffee. Today, I have a really, really specific one that we'll be using for pretty much everything. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> this uh, is a recent coffee launch that I just did uh, with Onyx Coffee, and I uh, was a little bit cheeky with the name. I have called this coffee, Morgan drinks this coffee. I know there's probably a better name out there, but really I thought this was the best one, so it's what we're stuck with. If you wanna learn more about this or pick up a box for yourself, you can check it out at one of the top links down below. However, what's more important is what's in this box. This coffee is a blend of washed and natural Ethiopian coffees. It's a light roast and it has a lot of complexity to it. So even though we're still making cold brew, we're making espresso, the coffee beverages that we're gonna have are gonna have a lot of like brightness to them. They're gonna be juicy, they're gonna be fruity, and they're gonna work really well with the ingredients we're adding to our cocktails, for lack of a better word. So I just wanted to point that out because first of all, this is very exciting. It's a very, very tasty coffee. And also just want you to think a little bit intentionally about what Type of coffee you're adding to your drinks. Because we all know a dark roast tastes very different than a light roast. And so by using a dark roast instead of a light roast in a drink like this, you'll have a pretty big flavor difference. Okay, enough of that. Let's get started. We are beginning today with our cold brew mojito. Let's just build it out. First thing you're gonna need is mint leaves. I have a lovely selection of mint leaves here for myself. We're also gonna need a cocktail shaker. Once more, please be kind with your roasting of how I use a cocktail shaker. I think I'm getting better. You all sent me a lot of good tips and people to check out last time. Very grateful for that. We're gonna start with five decently sized mint leaves. We'll just uh, pop them in here. And now we're gonna muddle them, which essentially is just gonna very lightly break them up and start to express some of the oils and some of the, the juice that's held up in these herb leaves. In the world of cocktails, this is a muddler. It is essentially a wooden stick <laughs> that has a nice end that will kind of crush up these leaves. We don't need them ground to a pulp. We just wanna start to break them up so we can express the flavor in the mint leaves. Really turning on my, <laughs> my drink maker hat today. We've given them a light crush. It's very aromatic. You can really smell the mint coming out of here. Next thing we're gonna need is our coffee. Now, usually this would be the point where you would add your alcohol into your mojito, but instead we're using cold brew. And we're gonna use about two ounces of cold brew in this. Next up, we need pineapple juice. I have one ounce of pineapple juice. Next, as our citrus, we're gonna use lime. And we're gonna use another <laughs> one ounce of lime juice. Make sure I uh, measure this correctly. 
And lastly, as our base ingredient, we need a sweetener of some type. Now, usually in mojitos, you will see just like a simple syrup used, which is just a, a melted down, like one to one ratio of, you know, a cane sugar of some type and also hot water. However, I think with our darker flavors that we have going on here with the coffee, uh, I think a little bit different of a sweetener works really well in this. And so instead of using simple syrup, we're gonna use maple syrup. This is a grade A dark maple syrup, so it has a really robust, rich flavor. It balances well with the citrus we've already added, as well as this kind of like lighter, kind of juicier cold brew. So I have an ounce of that. And now we need some ice. So in one side, we have our cocktail, coffee cocktail base. The other side, we have some ice. I'm gonna give this a good long shake and I'll be right back. I wanna give a huge thank you to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. I travel a lot more nowadays and one of the things I'm still learning how to do is to travel with products that make me just as comfortable as if I was at home. Harry's products have been lifesavers for making my travel weeks easy and luxurious. You know that feeling of climbing into bed after shaving and your legs feel like they're the smoothest they've ever been? With Harry's five blade German engineered razor, you don't have to ever give that up. There's no razor burn, cuts, or any of the unpleasantries that often come with shaving. Additionally, their foaming shave gel leaves my skin feeling moisturized with hyaluronic acid and aloe. It's as simple as starting with a small dollop and rubbing it together for a second or two, and a little goes a long way. So whether for your home toiletries or travel, Harry's Starter Kit is a great way to upgrade your shaving experience, and it has a value of $13. But Harry's is offering my followers the entire Starter Kit, which includes a bottle of shaving gel, razor, and blade cover for just just $5 when you click the link below. That's harrys.com slash Morgan Drinks Coffee. And thank you again to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. I've had some nice time with the shaking. Everything is nice and chilled in here, so let's get ready to assemble our final drink. For mojitos, pretty traditionally, you'll want a nice, tall, clear glass of some sort. This one has some nice etching on the side. It looks very pretty. This cocktail is gonna be very pretty, so the glass might as well match. Some, uh, fresh ice is gonna go in. Now, in my uh, more recent venture into the world of watching cocktail creators, I've been very inspired by the phrase hand-flavored ice. <laughs> I quite like that. So fresh hand-flavored ice has been added. I now have a strainer on here, which means we won't get like whole mint leaves stuck in here. Let's pour it in. That's nice, but it certainly doesn't fill the cup. And the mouthfeel of this isn't that interesting. So we have one final ingredient and that some sparkling water. You can use whatever sparkling water you like. I happen to be using Fever Tree. That is generally my uh, my drink building brand of choice. We're gonna top off this drink, and so I'm gonna add probably about three, maybe four ounces of sparkling water at most. And then, just for some nice garnishing, I'm gonna pop a final sprig of mint along with a few more slices of lime. And I just put my finger in the drink and that's okay because this is my drink, but if you're serving this to someone, maybe don't put your finger in the drink. And now you have a cold brew mojito. It's very light, it's refreshing. It's like a delicious coffee soda that is bright and citrusy and tastes a little bit like pineapple. It's very, very nice. It's a delicious drink. Let's move on to our next one. I feel like we have laid the groundwork of some technique and flavor combination. So we're gonna move on to something that is a, a little bit more complicated. Once more, we're gonna need a set of shakers. Okay, so this is gonna be our second drink using cold brew. So again, you don't need an espresso machine for this. This is very doable with tools you can probably find around your house. We're gonna be doing a take on a whiskey sour, but once more, instead of adding whiskey, we're gonna be using cold brew as our base. And this drink is gonna have a couple more techniques added to it. There are techniques I have talked about before as I used them last year in USBC, but we'll go over them again. So once more, we need to start with our cold brew base. I'm gonna go for a little bit more cold brew this time. We're gonna use about two and a half ounces in total. Now this drink is gonna be a lot more coffee forward than our last drink. It's a lot heavier on the cold brew side. So again, the choice of what coffee you're using is very important. With this being a blend of both washed and natural Ethiopian coffees, you really get like this grounded, clean flavor in the cold brew, but you also get some of those like brighter, fruitier, like a little bit more citrusy notes that you often associate with like natural Ethiopian coffees. So very, very, very pleasant, um, super enjoyable on its own but also a great base here. Now we have to add a citrus and instead of lime juice, we're gonna be using lemon juice. Okay, so three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. 
and then we need to add some sugar to this because right now we have a whole lot of acidic things in here. Now, instead of using maple syrup, we're gonna go back to that more traditional sugar syrup that you use in cocktails. We need a simple syrup. I have a pretty easy one made up right here. I'm using cane sugar, so it's clear. It's not gonna add any color to our drink. This is gonna be a pretty dark beverage because of all the ingredients we have in here, but it's gonna add some nice balancing sweetness. I'm gonna use a full ounce of simple syrup. And then our ingredient that is gonna add some nice texture to this drink. Cause right now, besides the simple syrup, which has a little bit more viscosity, we just have kind of a loose drink that even when shaken, probably isn't gonna be that interesting. And so we're gonna add something that might seem a little bit strange to some of you. We have to add an egg white. So separate out your egg white. You'll sometimes get a little bit of like this kind of white membrane in here. I like, to, I like to fish that out. I don't think it's very pleasant to the end drink. Now we're gonna add this into our base and we're gonna do what's called a dry shake, which means we're gonna shake everything together without adding any ice. This is pretty important when adding like egg whites as an emulsifier, because if you add it and then just immediately shake with ice, usually you'll be left with kind of a, a frothiness that is super bubbly. It's not smooth. You'll get some like lumpiness to it. And it's just not like, it's not a pleasant drinking experience. When an egg white is added, incorporated, and emulsified into a drink properly with a dry shake, you end up with something that's honestly a lot similar to kind of like your latte art microfoam. You end up with a really, really consistent, like frothy texture. Uh, it's very nice, it's bubbly, it's stiff, and it just works a lot better. If you go back and watch my performance from last year at the USBC, I used an egg white as an emulsifier in my drink, and I actually, instead of doing a dry shake, used a little like immersion blend I added all my ingredients into my cocktail shaker and then I just used my immersion blender for a couple seconds. That was essentially doing the exact same thing as a dry shake. It was just emulsifying and frothing everything, but the immersion blender was a little bit easier for me to handle and it was a little bit faster. So if you have an immersion blender, feel free to do that. Otherwise, dry shake. Egg white in and we shake. You wanna do this for a good vigorous, like. 15 to 20 seconds. Give it a good amount of time to get frothy. Then, kind of look inside there, you'll see our nice egg foam that's been created. Now we can shake with ice. Back to shaking. We need a strainer once more, and we need a nice cup. I'm gonna use this little coupe glass that I have. It's about five ounces. So, strain out your drink. Wow, I was really, <laughs> really playing with surface tension here. All right, we now have a beverage that has a nice, foamy little cap of texture on it. Now, you can drink it as is, but if you want to add a little bit of garnish, you can do one final thing. Whiskey sours are usually served with a maraschino cherry or like a little orange pinwheel or something like that, or you'll sometimes see them with a couple dashes of bitters on top. Now, this is up to you. Bitters do have some alcohol content, so if you don't wanna have any alcohol at all, you can avoid these. You can use some other citrus or cherry, but this is a kind of fun touch on top. Just a few dashes. Now we have three drops of bitters and a nice beverage to drink. It's very, very pleasant. This is a, a more coffee forward drink, as I said before. You get that kind of nice punch of acidity from the lemon juice, but you also have a good deal of sugar in there. So it's nice and evenly balanced, even though we've added a lot of acid to this. The egg white itself really doesn't add any flavor. It's just an emulsifier. It adds some nice weightiness, some creaminess to the mouth texture. And you also get this really pleasant foam on top. So similar to sipping through a cappuccino or a latte, you get this, this nice bit on the front and then the rest of your beverage beneath it. This is very tasty. I would drink this entire thing, but we have one more beverage to make. Okay, I feel like we have made very good time today, but we're here at our third beverage. This is gonna be our take on a Moscow mule, but instead of an alcohol, we're gonna use espresso and chilled espresso. So let me go grab some of that. So I have two-ish ounces and or about 40 grams of espresso right here. Now this, once more, is our nice blend of natural and washed Ethiopian coffees that is unfortunately stuck with the name Morgan Drinks Coffee. I did that, it's on me. I really like it, hopefully you do too. However, this was pulled at a temperature of around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning this is very hot and it's gonna stay hot for a quick while. However, for this Moscow Mule drink, which is gonna be served cold, we need to bring our 
espresso down to a temperature that matches it. So we don't cause like dilution with the ice. That's gonna just lead to a watery drink. And this is where I have a little tool here that I find very, very helpful for cooling down coffee really quickly. And once more, you have probably seen me use this in competition and you'll see me use it in competition here in the future. This right here is called a hyper chiller. I believe they are between I don't want to like misquote myself, but like they're no more than $20 online. They're like 15 to $20 and they're what they're called. It's a hyper chiller inside here is a double walled layer of ice. And so when you pour your espresso or your liquid here into the top, it is immediately flash chilled with two layers of ice on either side of the, the container in there. Don't know how to explain that better. I feel like that was a poor explanation. Anyways, right now, espresso hot, pour in espresso cold. That's the best summary I can give. Again, this works great for competition when you need to really, really quickly chill your espresso on stage, but it also works nicely at home. It's an easy tool to have. This is not sponsored by by the way, I just really like this and have been using this for a long time. You can give this a little swirl if you like, but really as soon as your espresso goes in there, it's chilled down to a nice usable temperature. Okay, we'll set that to the side. Let's build our drink. Now a Moscow mule is traditionally served in like a copper mug, I think, I think is the best way to describe it. However, I'm not a huge fan of the appearance of those mugs. And since what we're making is not a true Moscow mule, I think it's all right if we use a slightly different receptacle. So, I have this. And I'm sorry, I could not tell you where I got this from. I've had this uh, set of cups for years and I don't know. I had someone recently ask me where this kind of like beveled glass was from and I searched for like two hours and no luck. So if you know where this is from, awesome. This honestly is probably one of the simplest out of all our drinks. Let's start by filling our cup with ice. Some nice hand flavored ice as I have so learned is the term. Now the base of a Moscow mule is usually ginger beer. So we once more, have some ginger beer. Now, of course, use what you like. I like fever tree. Once more, we have some fever tree ginger beer. We're gonna add hmm, about six ounces of this. Always add a little bit less. We have some other ingredients to throw on. You can always top it off with the rest of your ginger beer if you need to. Now, ginger beer is already sweet. We don't need to really add any sugar to this, but we do wanna add some acid to it. So we're gonna go back to our lime juice. We're gonna add about half an ounce of lime juice. You. And very simply, we're gonna pour our espresso over top. Now we have some room left and so we can top off with the rest of our ginger beer. Carefully though, make sure it's not gonna <laughs> be very cautious when adding uh, anything carbonated to espresso. There tends to be this really interesting reaction where it just foams up very aggressively and very quickly. Oftentimes you will see it explode. I've done this with espresso tonics a billion times. Just be cautious. Now, as you can see on this beverage, we kind of have this nice little like, nice little layer or head of kind of foam on the top. And again, this is that interaction between the carbonation and kind of what I'm assuming is the solids in the espresso. That is my best guess. I could be wrong, but that's kind of my understanding of why this, this little layer happens. It's a nice little avenue for some garnish. So let's add a garnish. Got a very fine microplaner here. I also have some more of our lime. So we're just gonna zest a little bit of this on top. Don't zest too far. Otherwise you'll get to like the pith of the lime. It's that white part underneath uh, the peel. Is it called the peel? The zest? <laughs> Whatever you wanna call it. It's the white part. It's bitter. It's not pleasant. Just zest very lightly. And note that this will require better aim than I have, or you will have to wipe up additional zest that has fallen to the side. Okay, you're all done. You're ready to consume. It's light, it is bright, it is punchy, and it's really nicely balanced. What this drink comes really close to without the addition of a spirit and with the addition of espresso is really an espresso tonic, which is instead of ginger beer using tonic water, espresso, and sometimes there are some other garnishes to it. But this one definitely has a little bit more bite to it from the ginger beer. It's really nice. So these are our three classic cocktails that you can very easily and quickly turn into some really delicious coffee beverages. I'll have all the instructions and ingredients down in the description below, but once more, we have our cold brew mojito. We have our whiskey sour that I suppose we could call a cold brew sour if you'd like. And then we also have our Moscow mule made with chilled espresso. And really, you can apply this principle of switching out, you know, cocktail spirits with a coffee ingredient to most 
classic cocktails and really anything. I wanted to make this video to kind of like spark some curiosity as to what drinks you've had in the past that you think might make a good combination with coffee. So these are some of my favorites, but let me know yours because I am happy to make them and try them myself. Anyways, I'm gonna go consume these. <laughs> <laughs> because all these are super tasty. And I will see you all next time. Uh, again, if you would like to check out the coffee or buy some yourself that I was using today, uh, it is called Morgan Drinks This Coffee. You can find it at morgandrinkscoffee.com or one of the top links down below. Again, thank you to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you all next time. I am Morgan Drinks Coffee and you will find me here on YouTube once a week, plus some YouTube shorts. Additionally, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok almost every single day. I feel like I've been botching that outro lately and I think I kind of nailed it this time. So. Till next time, have a good week, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.